Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Come and hit the subscribe button. I'll send you a my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, and it's helicoptered, pearlocoptered right to your door. Signed by me. Who doesn't want that? As you can see in the background, we have Caleb Jones. Yes, that's right. The Edmonton Oilers have traded Caleb Jones, as you probably already know, to the Chicago Blackhawks with the third round pick for Duncan Keith. And we're going to get into that in a second here. Um, there's been a lot of dis like for this trade and we're going to go over what uh we're going to go over what kenny holland had to say in the edmonton journal as to why he made the trade uh why he gave up why he didn't take get um chicago to retain um i find it very interesting because we hear it over and over again that we're in this flat cap world and here's the Edmonton Oilers trading for a five, over $5 million player who played, yes, 21 minutes a night for Chicago last year, 21 to 23, somewhere around there, um, fairly effectively from what I watch. I watch a divorce-worthy amount of hockey when it's on. Uh, yeah, I watch a lot and I watch Chicago quite a bit. I watch it every team quite a bit. I watch them all the time. Um, he did well. I mean, is he the Duncan Keith when he's 33? Of course not, but he did well. I think he would have did much better with lower minutes, somewhere around 17 minutes a night, somewhere around there, which is still kind of three, four. You can still play him in the three, four slot. You just don't have to play him on the penalty kill. Uh, hopefully you have somebody that can run the power play. I play him mostly five on five and play him less minutes. And I think his analytics numbers, which, by the way, did not look great. It seemed that everybody he played with played better without him. So that's not a good thing. But that could be because at 21 minutes a night, he's getting overplayed for his age, I believe. And I think he can be much more effective as a 17, uh, uh, in the 17 minutes, 18 minutes spot. And apparently, Mr. Kenny Holland believes the same. And we're going to go look at that right away here. Uh, this was in the Edmonton Journal, as you can see. Uh, we're going to look at, by the way, this fellow here, David Staples. He was nice enough. He's a writer for the Edmonton Journal, fantastic writer. He was nice enough to do a video with me one time. Thank you very much for that. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is what he said. It's, it's hard to pass up a player that has as much experience and success as Duncan Keith. This is Kenny Hall, general manager of the Oilers. Not only will Duncan help us on the ice, but he'll be a tremendous leader in the locker room. And I do agree, that's certainly something that they need. Uh, no doubt about that. Obviously excited today, a legitimate top four defenseman. And I know Duncan is very excited. So what he's reiterating here is two things, of course. He believes he's a legitimate top four defenseman. I think a lot of people are on the fence about that at 38 years old, that Duncan Keith at this moment is a legitimate top four defenseman. Would he be a legitimate top four defenseman on teams like, say, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Montreal Canadiens that just made the finals? We're trying to win a cup here, right? So would he be on those two teams? How about other teams? How about the Carolina Hurricanes? Uh, Colorado Avalanche, the upper echelon teams in the league. Is he a top four defenseman? I think that's disputable for sure. No doubt about it. So if he's making your team better to be a top four defenseman, that might say something about the defense of the Edmonton Oilers more than whether he's a top four defenseman, correct? 
He was a top four defenseman in Chicago last year. However, Chicago had a very young defense and um, obviously didn't make the playoffs, although they tried. They made a pretty good run for it. Um, I think he can help the Edmonton Oilers. So we'll continue as we go. Obviously excited today. Okay, Holland defended the Black Hawks not retaining any of Keith's $5.5 million salary. If we were to retain up to 50%, if we were getting Duncan Keith at 2.75, the price would have been a lot higher than it is today. So he's saying that he would have to give up more than Caleb Jones, who I admit was in and out of the lineup, was not a regular at 24 years old, and his upside is questionable. I don't think that's a terrible player to give up for Duncan Keith. Uh, the third round pick, on the other hand, is kind of questionable for me. Uh, the, and the fact that this would have been a lot higher if they retained. And the reason why a lot of people are, uh, and well, we'll just continue. Chicago is getting a young defenseman in Caleb Jones that was in and out of the lineup, which I just mentioned. They are excited to get Caleb Jones. Okay, I'm sure they are. What else are they going to be? Oh, shoot. We've got Caleb Jones. If we wanted to have low salary, we would have had to put in more assets. Why is what everybody's asking. Why? He only was supposed to, he only was accepting a trade somewhere around Penticton where his son lives. So Edmonton, Vancouver, who appeared to be completely out of it, probably because Chicago wasn't going to retain. Or Seattle, really, are the only teams. There was only three teams that I can tell that he would have accepted a deal to. Um, now, Kate, Duncan Keith never said he wanted to move. So I think that could be part of it here. It's possible that Chicago held over their heads. If you don't make it worth our while, we'll just keep Duncan and he'll stay here which is odd because now Duncan Duncan was saying he wanted to be closer to his son. So now they're going to say, never mind being closer to your son. Uh, they won't give us a third round pick. So you got to sit here and, you know, try to get to your son the best you can. Is that possible? Maybe. Maybe Duncan Keith was happy in Chicago, would have stayed in Chicago, but they went to him and said, it's probably time for you to move on. Where do you want to go? He said, I'd like to be closer to my son and go to Vancouver if I have to go. So maybe they're holding that over his head. That's possible. I'm thinking that is fairly likely here, I guess. Again, now, which leaves us to the next question. Do you just not take Duncan Keith at all then? Right? A 38-year-old defenseman making over $5 million a year. And I'll get into that as we get closer to the end as to why they may have felt that they had to get Duncan Keith in this spot. Asked by Daniel Nugent Bowman of The Athletic whether he would have done better on the Keith deal, Holland said, what do you want me to get from for free? And I think most of us, would, the answer would be, well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, it would appear in this cap world that there's going to be a lot of players that Seattle is going to go, I'm not taking him unless you give me a first round pick. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video after this on, on Boracek. Uh, and, and that may be the possibility. So you want a lesser price. You want Caleb Jones. You don't want the draft pick. You want them to retain 50%. Which one would you like me to do? Do you want me to get them to retain money or do you think I paid too high a price with Caleb Jones in the third round pick? That would be the one that people think you paid too, of a high, too high of a price. My answer would be Caleb Jones hasn't yet established himself as an everyday defenseman in the National Hockey League. He was in and out of our lineup. He shared time with Russell and William Lagason. Then we got Kulikov at the deadline. He didn't play a playoff game. So in other words, we weren't really too high on him. That's what he said. And I don't, you know, that is what it, that is what it is. Are there people high on him? I was okay. I don't know what his upside was. It doesn't look, it didn't look like it was going to be great. Um, they have Broberg. They have Samarukov who are coming up and they're going to have to have a spot for them. I get it. I get Caleb Jones being part of the deal. I get it. 
Both are a left shot. Again, I get it. Um, so I'll, let me get back to here to... That's why... Uh, and then he said, I could sit on the sidelines and smoke out Stan Bowman. I don't believe you smoke out people. I think I respect the other 31 managers. So what does he mean by smoke out? He sits there and waits for a better deal on Duncan Keith because they can't put him anywhere else and hope or hope that they come back around to him and say, okay, we'll retain some money and we'll take the deal. Yeah, that's kind of what we thought. It's kind of what we're thinking that you would do. Um, at the end of the day, the solution was what you heard today. He says that he thinks that, you know, 31 general managers have their job because they're good. So you're saying that those 31 general managers can outsmart you? <laughs> that has to be a fair deal. A fair deal is whatever the deal was. If it's not, do you, you think it's fair that you got uh, over a 38-year-old defenseman who may be a top four? That's the big thing. Is he a top four defenseman for the next two years for over $5 million in a cap world where that's a lot of money in a flat cap world? that you had to give up a third, you think that it sounds to me like he's saying, I could have waited to get less, but I wouldn't feel right about it. Does that sound like that to you? I think it's more to do with the fact that they thought they'd lose him if they did for whatever reason. And I don't know who else was out there because I don't think Seattle's giving you a third to get Duncan Keith. I don't see Seattle doing that. Why? They don't need Duncan Keith. Vancouver would probably be waiting, uh, look like they were out of it at that price. So was Vancouver in for a lesser price? Where, what, where was Vancouver on this? Did Vancouver push the envelope? Say they were in for a fifth and non-retained, or you had to retain. They had to retain, and they could have waited. And then Vancouver retain, and then they would have lost. Chicago retains with Vancouver. Vancouver gives up a couple assets, and they, and they lose Duncan Keith. Is that the possibility there? So the next question is, can you do more with the money? Um, on negotiations with GM Stan Bowman, Stan made it clear if he wanted us to eat salary, we'd have to give up more assets. He can make it as clear as he wants to. He made it clear to you, you'd have to give up more assets. And you can simply say, okay, come back around if I don't. That's it. Just come back around and if I don't, if you got somebody else that's going to give you, take the whole salary and give up assets like a third in a prospect, then I guess take it. Because we can take that $5 million dollars in this cap world and probably get a younger player for the same amount of money. But can they? That's the next question. Can they? So we'll continue. I know he's 37 years old, but he's motivated. He's excited, okay? And, and he brings a lot of intangibles that's hard to put a price on it. I agree. I totally agree with that. I know the teams that go on playoff runs are good. We just watched recently this past week. If you look at the veterans and the impact they have on those teams, true. I think one of the players he'd be looking at here would be Corey Perry for the Montreal Canadiens. However, Corey Perry made league minimum and Montreal gave up nothing. So, if you look at the veteran plays and the impact, that they have on those teams. Yes, absolutely. I do believe Duncan Keith will have an impact on this team. I do believe they need leadership. I do believe there's value here. On re-signing Adam Larson, I've got money set aside for Adam Larson. Okay, this doesn't screw up the Adam Larson deal, which I don't even think is totally imperative. Um, he compared Keith to Chris Chelios in a lot of ways, saying that, you know, they can play till they're older, but the thing is, he already has been declining. How much more is he going to decline in the next two years? 
Great players are able to withstand the aging process. Some are, some not. And he's already declining. Noting that the Keith led the Blackhawks in time on ice this season. I look at Mike Smith at 39 and the impact he had with them last year. He's not 50. I mean, he's 37. In this day, he was a great. In his day, he was a great skater. Does he skate as good as when he was 28? No, but he by that 37. But even if his skills have diminished some, he's still a good player. So he's basically he's basically saying he's a good player. Then we'll continue on. Says I'm aware of the analytics. Yes, his his analytics aren't as good as they were in his prime. But I'm not asking him to be our number one defenseman to play 25 minutes against other teams' best players. Darnell Nurse is going to do that. Who, by the way, has poor defensive analytics? Darnell Nurse is not a great defensive player analytically. Uh, in a lesser role against lesser players in a new opportunity playing with a different team. Yeah. Holland had a Zoom call with Oscar Cle and Clefbaum isn't coming back, which I think also probably spurned this on. Now, we're all going to be asking, couldn't he go somewhere else? What about Jalmerson, who makes a lot, who's a free agent right now and probably won't be getting this kind of money in Arizona, for instance? Just a for instance. Goligoski is out there. Uh, Alexiak is out there. There's a lot of defensemen out there that you might be able to get in this cap world at $5 million. Why would you give up assets for free? Or give up assets for a guy who's 37 years old when you could get a player younger that might even be able to play longer now. And the answer is this, I believe. The Edmonton Oilers is not a popular destination for free agents to go. It has been known for a long time. They've struggled with it for years. And teams already know, kind of have an idea who they can get out there in the market. I can assure you that. I know there's tampering rules and all of that. And when you're not supposed to talk to people before free agency and all that kind of stuff like that. But there's certainly ways to do so. And they do it. Agents talk to general managers all the time. So... It happens, and I think it's possible, we'll see, that the Edmonton Oilers know that they're out on a lot of the people out there this year. And uh, that that's the answer for a lot of the times with Edmonton. And they end up having to pay a little more to get a player they want. In this case with Duncan Keith, he brings a lot of, he does bring a lot of intangibles. He will certainly help. McDavid certainly needs help in the leadership department. I think that as, as just the player himself playing 17, 15 to 17 minutes, maybe don't play him on the penalty kill as much. Maybe don't play him on the power play as much. Uh, hopefully, you know, they can get a player that's going to do that sort of thing. He can play at a higher level than he did in Chicago, not playing Chicago-like minutes. It looks really good. And if you're completely out of going to get anybody else. If Edmonton doesn't get anybody on the D-line this year, people are going to be losing their minds. Why didn't you do anything? If they know they're out of everything or pretty sure about it right now, they're making this move and Chicago did well to establish a leverage with the team that needed somebody on their back end and was probably out of it. Stan Bowman, the Bowman guys, they know a lot. They are knowing where players are going to go to. They know the likelihood that Edmonton isn't going to be able to find a defenseman out there that's going to help them out for the money that they need for around $5 million. They know who's available. They have insight on where most of the players are wanting to go and deciding to go. They all have agents, they all talk, and they know. So that's why I think that the Edmonton Oilers had to do what they did in this situation. Sucks for them? Yeah. I could be wrong. 
Yeah, but I don't think I am. Tell me what you think there in the comment section about the Edmonton Oilers and what they did here. I'm going to be doing another piece on Borachek here right away. And uh, I'll see you later. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you, Kate. Bye, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Go to the website. It's amazing.